folks, like I promised you, I've got loads of guests tonight. And one such guest, great friend of mine, Jeff Meads from Tennessee Twin. How are you doing, fella? I'm doing great, Paul. How are you? I'm doing great. It's been like a nearly 12 months. I, I first got to see you at the British Country Music Festival in Blackpool for the very first time, and you, you both blew me away with your music. But things have sort of evolved from then anyway, haven't they? I mean, you've just gone better and bigger and you know, more concerts, more albums, all that kind of thing going on. Oh, bless you. Yes, absolutely. What what a great festival that was. We had such a great time and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Highly recommend it to, if you haven't been made the trip up to Blackpool to that. And I know they've got some great, a great lineup this year too. But uh, yeah, we've been pretty busy, actually. We had a very busy second half of the year last year with, uh, with gigs and recording and releases. But um, one of the things we've concentrated on in this first sort of part of this year, although we're busy, Victoria and I, uh, recording a new album for release later in uh, this year under Tennessee Twin. We've have been doing some writing um, with the lovely ladies that is Donna Marie and Sarah Yo uh, and ourselves that make up this thing we call the Songs and Stories Collective. Wow! Um, and we release our first uh, original single this week on on uh, Friday, May twentieth. Um, it's called Stars and Stripes. It's not maybe quite what you think. We can maybe talk about that later. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. And we've got a string of gigs together coming up too. I was really fortunate on Sunday at Carmen's in Atherton near Manchester uh, to see Donna Marie. And she yep. There it is. There's the CD. <laughs> she lives, and she's from my part of the world, St. Helens area. Um, yeah. And um, what, a, what a voice. Uh, yeah, what a voice. What a production talent as well. As not many people know that about Donna, but uh, she records and produces all her own music, along with a lot of music for other people too. And... We have to give massive thanks. We have a studio here and I've been a studio engineer most of my life. Um, so to have to turn it over to somebody else and be able to just let someone else do that work was just wonderful. And what a great job she does. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So it's, it's um, and she was telling me about the, you know, the collective and, and, and what's going to happen. But you're also at the Live in the Living Room Festival this weekend, is it? Is it this weekend? It is this weekend, yeah. So live in the living room, obviously put on relatively regular again. Obviously, you know, a word before the the unmentionable, and now again afterwards, um, events in aid of various charities, and they tend to be um, a full on day of writers' rounds, usually starting around lunchtime, going on till about ten p.m. Um, so we have played those before. Uh, they're wonderful, wonderful events. We're really looking forward to this one. Um, so rather than having some uh, some other just random people in the writers round, they're always good, but just you know people we don't normally play with. Uh, this time we were asked uh, by uh, Linda Conway, voice of, a voice of a woman. Um, she she was putting on a round. Each of the rounds in this uh, Sunday's gig are sponsored by different sort of organisations, and and uh, she asked us to do um, that one. So that it will be the Songs and Stories Collective for an hour talking about our own songs and playing some of our own songs. And we might even sneak in uh, a collaboration of the new single. We never know. That's great. I mean, I've just joined live in the living room as a presenter. Um, so oh, I've, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so I've just been sending over um, quite a few of my uh, American contacts have been doing some acoustic stuff and sending that over. So uh, lots, literally a couple of weeks ago, um, I just thought, well, this, this, this looks good. This sounds good. Unfortunately, I can't be down there. Um, th this week, but I know that next year we're uh, the BCMA looking at sponsoring one of the rounds uh, as well, so we'll be involved with that next year's. Yeah, that would make complete sense. And it's such that this particular gig is at such a wonderful venue. Um, it's at the Bedford in Balham, which is a real old school, circular, multi tiered venue. Great stage, superb sound in there, too. So, in terms of South London, it's one of the one of our favorites, I have to say. So, it's, it makes for a really lovely day. I'm gutted. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm gigging myself, unfortunately. So, <laughs> so, um, but so yeah. So what what else is happening then? Obviously, you've got a t you know you get more concerts coming in. You you're saying you're re you're writing now and producing for a new album. So when can we expect to see that? Or are, are you going to do a tour around that? Um, we will pr almost certainly do a string of dates around that for sure. Um, the at the moment the way <laughs> was a, a small hiccup uh, in the, the the writing and recording of the album. The writing is mostly done actually, uh, but more in the recording of the album because we do record a lot of our stuff here. We've got the band back together, which is great. Um, so that's uh, that's we're looking forward to that and, and looking forward to some gigs with them as well later in the year. So certainly launch time, we'll be doing something with the band for that. Um, but we are moving house. 
which means taking the studio apart and building a new one. So slight hiccup in that, but that is priority number one as soon as we walk through the door of the new house. So, um, you know, and there'll be a small delay, but certainly uh, tail end of this year, then that's when we're looking to put the album out. We're really looking forward to having a full album out again. Oh, it'd be great to hear that as well. I've been playing your album that you kindly give it to us as well. And also the T-shirt, although it's in the wash now. Oh. <laughs> my most used T-shirt. I've just done um, a vacation in Canada. Oh, lovely. Down in Ontario. And I've had that on in Pride of Place. And people oh, like, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. it's Yeah, it, I think it, for, for us, you know, the merch thing, obviously all the artists do it. It was important to try and get good quality stuff. And because as we all know, you know, if, if they're, they're not good quality, we don't end up wearing them. And that's, you know, that's uh, that's not really any good. <laughs> oh, one, wash, one wash and it's up your back. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> but, um, I remember going to Turkey once and they lost my case. And we meeting my friend there who'd been there a week. And I'd never been to Turkey before. And he, Ishmael, and he said, come on, I'll take you to this bizarre, you know, the marketplace. And we'll oh, yeah. Marketplace, and this guy's already um, remonstrating with my friend who'd been there because my mate was a salesman like I used to be, and we're close friends and stuff. And he's saying, "You go away, you go away, you rip me off." And he says, "No, I'm bringing you custom. You've missed, but you know, you've, your airport has lost my friend's case. We need some clothes for a few days." So I'm like this, you know, got my arms out, and it's like an army surplus. So it's got some words. <laughs> Nike spelled N I C K E. Nice. <laughs> You know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, some underwear and, and, and a couple of shorts and that. And, and we bartered him down to 10 English pounds because at the time, the euro was just about to come out. And um, we didn't have the euros, but we said, well, well, and, and he said, 10 pounds. I've got to feed my kids. You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. Walking away and he's like, you, no, you English pigs. You know, he's like... <laughs> Like I said, one wash and it's up your back. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. I, my record for losing a case is three weeks. Oh. It did eventually make it back. It actually, uh, yeah, I was on the back, way back from Las Vegas of all places, and um, the case didn't quite make a connection I had in, in LA, and um, I got back, case didn't, and I got various reports over the weeks where it was, and it turns out it came over to Britain, and then they decided they didn't know what it was, so they sent it back to the US again. So very well travelled that case, but I did eventually get it back. I uh, Just briefly, I remember, it, and it, it was... Was it nine eleven? Was it just after nine eleven? It was something like that. Where we'd gone to Norwich from Manchester on a flight. We'd well mm. working at Norwich Union at the time, and did lost the case. So that that was that was okay. Um, but it had my keys in the bag because it was at that time where they were they were in lockdown um, due to something happening in Glasgow, and we said, yeah, you, you know, everything's got to be in the hold. You can't bring it yeah. up. So I had to put keys, contact lenses, everything. They lost the case. So oh. straight away I went to Debenham's Blue Cloth sale, get a couple of, you know, and all that, the toiletries, get some contact lenses from Specsave, all that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, I'm phoning them up and said, um, you've lost my case. No, we haven't. I said, you have? No, no, no. Anyway, a couple of days later, I'm on my way back, and I'm at the airport at Norwich, and it's a very small airport. I don't know if you've ever been there. I have, yeah. The, the bag hold was just a big like room and i was saying to the guy there and and i don't know how it happened but basically he opened it up and says can you see your case in there so i went in i went no so i'm phoning manchester saying you've lost my case oh it's in norwich no i'm in norwich I'm <laughs> looking at the bags now you know it was like one of them oh, it was crazy but we digress <laughs> um so i mean what is next then you've got the album you've got the tour we've got a feature film coming out have we well, we could do that. We might end up with the odd video. That's... What's going on? We have a we have an agreement um, with between the Songs and Stories Collective. It's a divide and conquer thing. It's one of the nice things about all of us working together is that we don't have to do absolutely everything because you know as a as an artist when you release music there is a list a mile long of small jobs but all take time. Um, and then you you know you look at uh, producing videos and all that kind of stuff and it it, it all adds up. But one of the nice things we were able to do is actually divide and conquer that. So Donna works on the um, uh, recording and, and mixing of the songs. I do the mastering. Uh, we work. Sarah does a lot of the artwork um, and all, all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, we're currently looking at um, a video for the single and uh, various other things we sort of will release over the next couple of weeks. And videos tend to fall to me. So, um, yeah, it, it's that's all part of it. But the Songs and Stories Collective themselves, apart from we're, this Friday, we're actually being hosted by the Cambridge Folk Club, 
uh, which is a really lovely uh, club and venue. They take a big part in the Cambridge Folk Festival, uh, which is obviously a massive event. Uh, we've had the good fortune to play there more than once. So um, that's that. Uh, Sunday, live in the living room. Then we're off to uh, sort of mini tourette. So we have, uh, we're up with um, uh, the uh, event in York, Nashville. I can't remember the, the I'm just going to look it up. That's terribly unprepared of me. I don't have it in front of me. Um, so yeah, Doncaster. We're in Doncaster in June, the 18th of June. I think that was nearly sold out actually at Thornston Manor. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. Um, Edinburgh Arms in York. Um, that one is 31st of July. We're looking forward to that. And then, of course, 13th of August, we're down to the West Country Music Festival in Exeter, which, of course, uh, Sarah is uh, has um, founded and running for the first time. Great lineup, including you know, Kezia Gill, Gasoline and Matches, Their Good Selves, and uh, just uh, Bob Fitzgerald. And, and just, yeah, it's just going to be a superb, lovely, and hopefully as sunny as today, because, you know, how wonderful Devon is in the sunshine. I know. I think, you know, and you get loads of scones and you come back three stone heavier and it's, it's you know, pasties and stuff like oh, that. Oh, pasties, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking. I think I'm playing, it was that, what I'm playing, is it Dawlish? I'm playing it Dawlish at some point. Mm -hmm. I can hear the birds then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm playing at Dawlish myself some in, in a couple of months' time, I think. Um, I'm looking forward to that. There's a big festival down there. But, it's, uh, you know, it's a great part of the world, but there's a lot of things going on, isn't there? So... Um, just briefly, then the new single. What's it called? Is 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 it um like I said, is Sir on the? You know what? How's it? You're saying like it's a collective. I mean, is it all the songs you do one each, or do you, do you back in vocals for each other, or we mix it? And, yeah, we mix it up actually. Um, the way it started was as a live stream. It, it was an accident, as as all these these kind of fun good things are. Um, we'd met Donna before actually on a couple of gigs. She's come, she'd come to see us play, and uh, we'd, we'd sort of got chatted at an award ceremony and, and various things. So we knew Donna, and we knew Sarah's work, but hadn't actually spoken to Donna. Although we heard a couple of in uh, so sorry Sarah, we we, we didn't um, we hadn't actually met Sarah, but we'd seen her stuff, we'd heard her stuff, and heard her interview, and thought she was the sort of person we might get on with. So chance twitter conversation between the three of us and we sort of said oh well it was it was early in 2020 when live streams were just really getting going and we said oh we should just do one between us and uh bless him dc brown jumped in and said oh i'll do the tech for you which is always really useful because that's one less uh, headache to worry about and he's really good at that stuff so um yeah we kicked off we had a sunday afternoon three o'clock and um it you know it was lovely weather and did a, a live stream and then we sort of said oh well we'll do a couple more and we did one a week for about 18 weeks, I think, something like that. And we became really good friends as well as the music side. So we found ourselves on Friday nights having sort of private Zooms with a glass of wine and, and, and whatnot. And the writing really sort of fell out of that as a natural thing. You know, when songwriters get together, sooner or later a guitar gets picked up and, you know, music comes out. So at the live events, uh, on the live streams, obviously we were doing it traditionally, i.e. you've got to do it one location at a time. We're in Cambridge, Donna's in Manchester area, Northwest, and uh, Sarah down in Exeter. So we couldn't really get much further apart and still be in England. Um, but obviously uh, the situation now is a bit different. It gives us a chance to actually get together. So last October, we did our first collective gig at Gulliver's in Manchester. That went really well. We sold the room out and uh, had such a great time and um, what we did with that is something we're continuing with is doing the things we can't do on a live stream so obviously we will do uh, a few original songs a couple of covers so will uh, the other ladies Donna and, and Sarah uh, but then we mix it up so you know at the uh, at the Gulliver's gig I, pl I played a song with Sarah and uh, Victoria and Donna did a thing and I did a thing with Bob Fitzgerald who was our guest for the evening um, so expect kind of random stuff at these gigs oh, coming up and and uh, yeah really looking forward to it and this this friday also we've got another very good friend of ours sandy mcclelland uh who's our guest for the evening so yeah it's a full and varied evening oh tell you what you can tell it lockdowns completely nearly enough completely eased off and and the, the shows i mean the so, just a wash of country music and festivals isn't there and everybody's like thinking which one should we go? I mean, I missed a couple. I missed Keith Urban. And I know we saw each other at the C2C, didn't we? At the That's Alp. right, yeah. Um, and then I congratulated you on something that you can tell the listeners about. Yes, we did take a couple months off this year. Oh, um, what was that for? 
um yeah so uh we got married uh, yeah. which is something we'd been putting off thank you um uh, only for the fact that we wanted our fam to get our family together and and that was going to be tricky and a lot of my family live in the us so um we really wanted the opportunity for them to come and everything all the stars aligned and they all managed to make it and uh they all came over and we had probably the worst English weather you could wish for. It was that lovely February, grey, rainy, blowy. For them, I, we didn't care. Obviously, we were expecting that and the wedding was inside, so it didn't matter. But but for them, you know, coming over for the week, it was really a bit of a, <laughs> not the greatest week to come. But yeah, we had a great time. Thank you. to say something then, but although it's not it's not valid now, but I said, yeah, we got married. Obviously, the family came over and I also pay less tax. And you, you don't do that now, because when I first got married, you, you had a tax deduction. Um, yeah, no, it makes no odds really nowadays. I know, but I was just praying for you to say that. Anyway, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> she's in the other room, so she's okay. She indeed, um, yeah. No, but that's no, but congratulations to you, Bob. Thank you so much. Yeah, like I said, wish you all the very best with everything coming on with the album, the single. We'll be obviously playing the single as well, and we'll put it out on our socials for the from a BCMA media point of view um, in the coming days. Obviously, on Friday it's launch day. You know, so it's five, four, three, two, one, launch. That's it. And uh, say hello to everybody live in the living room for me down there as well, James and the gang. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the near future. Yeah, you too, Paul. Thanks ever so much for having us and thanks to all the guys at the BCMA for all they're doing. You're welcome. Adios, amigo. Bye-bye.